I'm assuming you're wondering who am I and why am I here? And you're probably, despite what Carolyn said, saying who is this guy and why is he here? And I was sort of wondering the same thing. And then I realized, I think why I was invited to do this, and I was truly honored, and I mean that sincerely, is because I am a recipient of a Farm Aid grant. Now, I don't mean the kind of recipient like where those checks come and Willie Nelson's signature is on the bottom. Uh, I'm not likely to be a farmer at any time. I'm sort of a city boy, and that's never going to change. But I, the grant that I received is an education grant. I have to say, since I have been in and around Farm Aid, uh, Carolyn, Glenda, the staff, and all these things, I have learned so much about healthy choices, about clean environments, about supporting ordinary people who do extraordinary things with the land, about how to raise my kids in a healthier, more wonderful kind of way. And I know there are tens of millions of Americans who have received exactly the same sort of grant because of the great work from Farm Aid. Now, the one thing I didn't need to learn from Farm Aid was the importance of voting. Uh, there was a, there's a folk singer, and I assume all four gentlemen to the left know him, Utah Phillips, yes, Utah Phillips, who once said, if God had wanted us to vote, he would have given us candidates. You ever, and, that's, and I think we can agree in 2008, from top to bottom, he actually has given us a few candidates. So my only urging is, you have an opportunity on November 4th to show those who have made it their business to put family farmers out of business what the unemployment line is really like. So I hope you take that opportunity. It's hiring and firing day on November 4th. Don't miss it. <laughs> nearly 40 years ago, nearly 40 years ago, long before uh, Farm Aid was a glimmer in the hearts and minds of some of the gentlemen to the left, there was a book that created a revolution, Diet for a Small Planet. Uh, in Nostradamus-like fashion, the woman who wrote it predicted our current food and hunger crisis. The New York Times recently said, the New York Times recently said, that that book and the new one, which I'm holding, Getting a Grip, Clarity, Creativity, and Courage, and a World Gone Mad, were must-reads for our next president. How good does that sound? For our next president. I think you're with me on that. Francis Moore LaPay was also recently named one of Gourmet Magazine's 25 People Who Changed Food in America. Three others on the list, by the way, were Upton Sinclair, Julia Child, and Thomas Jefferson. Carolyn tells me that even if those three were with us today, she would have been our choice. So, <laughs> Francis, we're glad to have you here. Frankie, this year's Farm Aid comes in the middle of one of the worst financial meltdowns in American history. I think a lot of people are of the opinion that the incredibly obscene concentration of power in the hands of an unaccountable few helped cause this mess. So I guess the question is, uh, are there lessons which are transferable from this financial system mess to the situation we find ourselves in with the farm system? Yes, 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 yes. In fact, this, this week is full of two huge lessons. What a week for Farm Aid. This is the week that, of course, we see a financial meltdown. The morning's news is that now Bush is going to ask for $700 billion to deal with this meltdown. And that's been all over the news. But what you haven't seen is that the information is now in that at the beginning of this year, 75, uh, excuse me, 75 million more people were pushed into hunger by higher food prices by the beginning of this year. And by the end of the year, the UN told us this week that we could expect maybe another 75 million more. That's 150 million hungry people in a world with enough food to make us all plump. So there are huge lessons here, huge lessons. And this is the wake-up call that I think that Farm Aid is all about. There is no scarcity of food, but there is a huge scarcity. And that scarcity is of real democracy. And these two crises, these two crises, increasing concentration control of our economy and the world economy and our food is the opposite of democracy and it puts us all at risk. The biggest danger right now I call privately held government. <laughs> what a concept, privately held government that is the inevitable result of concentrated economic and political power that kills our common sense common decision making. I mean, when you think about it, what is democracy? It's everybody having a voice. And do you know anybody who would have said yes to these fatal disasters that we're now facing as a planet? So Farm Aid, 
Farm Aid is celebrating the good news, that we know what works. Just think how much more we know, know now than we did 23 years ago when Farm Aid began. We have incredible, dramatic proof that even though the, the playing field is tilted and over 70% of the subsidies are going to the biggest agribusiness, still, family farmers are the most productive. Uh, the most ecologically, as Carolyn was saying, the most ecologically responsible, and in fact are the way out of the climate crisis because overall our food system contributes about 30% of all of the carbon emissions uh, that are heating our planet. And, of course, family farms have been most productive. And organic? Organic? It, a, a, a study now, a, a Academic rigorous study says if the whole world went organic, available food would increase by about 50%. But where do you hear that in the news? Never. <laughs> but here, here we can celebrate. So Farm Aid is all about democracy. It's all about supporting family farmers and reminding us that dispersed democratic power is the only future. And the biggest mistake that we can possibly make is to buy the myth that family farmers are somehow quaint and passe. No, no, no. Without them, there is no future. Family farmers are the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you Frankie LePay. Thank you. John Mellencamp. Frankie talked about the future, and the, the saying I always get wrong is if you don't learn from the mistakes of the past, you're doomed to repeat them or whatever. Could you talk a little bit about how we got into the mess that some family farmers find themselves in and those of us who depend on them find ourselves in? Hello. Uh, yeah, uh, listen, thanks for everybody being here before I answer start talking about this stuff. In 1907, this is like, you know, people ask me all the time, John, are you guys still doing Farm Aid? And I go, yeah, well, why are you still doing it? You know, isn't that problem solved? And that's kind of disheartening for me. But this is just a little history lesson about uh, what Farm Aid is about. In 1970, Nixon appointed a guy named Earl Butts, and his slogan was, get big or go home. So that's 1970. Uh, I also want to point out that Earl Butts was later fired for a racial slur, so that was, he had that coming for sure. Uh, and since that time, more than 300,000 family farms have gone out of business. Four corporations now control 82% of the beef and cattle market. Five major packing corporations control 55% of the hog market. The average number of rural acres lost to urban sprawl in the United States since 1970 is a million acres per year. Think about that. In the last decade, approximately $130 million has gone into the U.S. commodity payments, which includes corporations like, uh, like crops like soy, corn, wheat, rice, uh, beet, sugar, and peanuts. The top 1% producer is getting 24% of the payments, and 10% uh, are receiving 73% of the government payments. So 10% of, the of these big factory farms are getting 73% of the farm bill, which the farm bill comes up once every five years, and then it just kind of lays there most of the time, and it's set up for these huge farms. So people say... Why are you guys still doing farm aid? Here's why. Suicides have replaced equipment-related deaths as the number one cause of family farm deaths. So that's why we're still doing farm aid. Thank you, John Mellencamp. 